Welcome back to another Python tutorial. In today's video, we'll be using Pygame to create a simple Pong game. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what this is going to look like. Okay, so this is our window for Pong, and as you can see, it's the basic Pong game where a ball bounces back and forth, and you have to try to stop it from going past your paddle. Okay, if it does go past the paddle, so I'll let it go past this time, the other player gets a point, and if it goes past this one, the player on the right would get the point. Alright, let's go ahead and dive in and get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do to get started making this Pong game is just set out the basic template for any Pi game. So the first thing you always have to do whenever you're using Pi game is to import it. So we're going to say import Pi game. Next, what we're going to do is initialize it. So to do that, we're going to say Pi game dot init with parentheses. The next thing we're going to do is create a window for our game. So to do that, we're going to store that inside of a variable. I'm going to call my variable win for window. This is going to be set equal to pygame dot display dot set underscore mode. And then you're going to do two open parentheses. Inside the second open parentheses, you're going to put the dimensions. So our window in this case is going to be 750 by 750. The next thing we're going to do is make a caption for our game. So this is what's going to show up in the upper left-hand corner. To do that, we're going to say pygame.display.set underscore caption. In this case, we just need one open parenthesis. The title will go in quotation marks, so I'm just going to keep it simple and say pong. Just like that. The next part we're going to do is optional, but what I like to do, if I know I'm going to be using some particular colors in the game, I'll go ahead and define the colors now. So I know in my game I'm going to be using the color white and also the color black. So what I'll do is I'll say white is equal to, and then I'm going to use parentheses and then put the color code. So white is 255, 255, and 255. The other color I'm going to be using is black, so we'll say black is equal to, and then black is equal to 0, 0, and 0. After that, we're going to set up the main loop of the game. To do that, we're going to be using a while true loop, but instead of writing it like this, We're going to be doing it a little bit differently, so what I'm going to do is right above it, I'm going to make a variable called run, and I'm going to set that equal to true. And then down below for my loop, instead of saying while true, I'm going to say while run. This way, later on in the game, when I'm ready to close it or end the game, I can set run equal to false, and that will break the loop. Okay, inside of the while true loop, the first thing we're going to say is time.delay. And then inside here will be the milliseconds, so we're going to do 100. Okay, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to say for event in pygame dot event dot get with parentheses. And what this is going to do, it's going to allow us to look through the events that pygame stores. So these are different things like key presses, mouse clicks, and different things like that. And the first event that we're going to be checking for is if event.type is double equals pygame.quit with all capitals. And what this is, this is whenever the user clicks on the X of the window. This event is the pygame.quit. If this happens, what we want to do is break out of our loop to end the game. So we're going to set run equal to false. Okay, all this is doing is breaking out of the loop to actually close the game. Outside of the loop, we're going to say pygame.quit. This is all lowercase and also with parentheses. 
Okay, and this is the basic template for any Pi game. I did make one mistake though, so before we run the game, we're going to go up here to where it says time.delay, and we need to put Pi game in front of it. So it should say Pi game .time .delay. Now if we go ahead and run our code, we should have a window here that says Pong at the top, and it's 750 by 750. Okay, so at this point, there's not a whole lot that you can kind of change. There are a couple things, though. So if you don't like the size of your window, what you can do is go up here where it says win equals pi game dot display dot set mode. This part right here is the width, so this is how long it goes left to right. And the second number right here, this is how tall it is, so going from top to bottom, it would be 750. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a little bit shorter, so instead of 750 for the height, I'm going to choose 500. The other thing that you can change, if you want to set your caption to a different thing, instead of Pong, you can say something like maybe Pong Game, or a totally different title, and that's where you would change it. So if you run your code again, we'll see the changes. So this time, instead of a square shape, the window is more rectangular. And also, instead of just saying Pong at the top, now it says Pong Game. Okay, and now that the basic setup is done, let's go ahead and get started drawing some of the objects. So to do that, right below where we define the colors, just create a few spaces. And the way we're going to draw the objects, we're going to be creating classes. And the reason we're using classes is because the different things like the paddles and the balls, they'll have different attributes. Like, for example, the paddle will have a dimension, it'll have a speed, and it'll also have points. And those are easier to reference in a class rather than having a bunch of different variables assigned to each different object. So the way we're going to do that to create a class, so the first thing you have to do is just say class. The next part, you're going to give your class a name. So the first one, we're going to be creating the paddle. So a good class name would just be paddle. OK, and inside the parentheses, we're going to say pygame dot sprite with a lowercase s dot sprite with an uppercase s. At the end, we're going to put a colon. The reason we put this right here we're going to be making our class a sprite. So by putting this inside the parentheses, it's going to import a lot of the features from the sprite class that's built into Pygame into this class. So inside of the class, the first thing we're going to do is make an init function. So we're going to say def for define. We're going to do two underscores, and then init two underscores. Inside these parentheses, we're going to say self and then a colon at the end. All right, inside of the init function, we're going to say pygame dot sprite dot sprite with an uppercase s dot, and then we're going to do another init, so it's two underscores, init, two underscores, and then self. Okay, after that, we're going to be creating the, the object itself. So we're going to say self.image, and this is going to be equal to pygame.surface with a capital S. And then we're going to use parentheses and square brackets. Inside the square brackets, we're going to put the dimensions of our object. So for the paddle, it needs to be taller than it is wide. So for the width, let's go ahead and use 10. And then for the height, let's go ahead and use 75. After that, we're going to define the color of the object. So we're going to say self dot image dot fill. Inside the parentheses will be the color. And since we defined the color white already above, we can just put the variable white inside of here. If you didn't define the color, then you'd have to put the color code inside of here. The next thing we're going to do is say self dot rect for rectangle. This is going to be equal to self.image. So what we're doing is we're referencing this part right up here. So from this part, we're going to add dot get underscore rect for rectangle. So what this is going to do, it's going to get this image right here with these dimensions. And then it's going to create an invisible rectangle around it. 
and we'll be using that part for moving the object and also for collision detection. So whenever the, the pong ball bounces into the paddle, we'll be able to tell it's colliding because of this rectangle part here. All right, and the last thing we're going to do is we're going to create points for this object. So we're going to say self.points. And let's go ahead and set it equal to 0. Okay, so in general, to create another sprite, like for example, in the next one, we're going to do the ball. This top line will be exactly the same. The only thing you're going to change is the name of the class. This second line right here will be exactly the same. We're not going to change anything for that. And this third line will also be exactly the same. So since they're going to be exactly the same, let's just go ahead and copy these three. And then d down below this class, let's go ahead and paste it. So the second class is going to be for the Pong ball. So let's go ahead and say ball right here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say, just like before, self.image is going to be equal to pygame dot capital S for surface. And this time we're going to be creating a little square. So the dimensions for this one are going to be 10 by 10. So inside the square bracket, let's put 10, comma, 10. All right, the next part we're going to do is make this ball white. So we're going to say self dot image dot fill. Inside the parentheses is going to be white. So we're going to say white. And then we're going to create a rectangle for it. So just like below, above, self dot rect is equal to self dot image dot get underscore rect. Just like that. All right, so the ball is going to have a couple more properties that we're going to add later, but this is the basic idea for now. So we have two different classes. We have our paddle class and our ball class, and the paddle and ball class have different features. They have an image part, they have a rectangle part, and they have a points part. And then let's go ahead and run a code just to make sure we don't have any issues. So if I press run, so I don't see any errors down below. So, so far we're doing pretty good. So if you notice, I still don't have anything drawn on the screen yet. So while we created the classes, we, act, we haven't actually created the objects yet. And so what we're going to do in the next video is learn how to use these classes to actually create the object and start drawing stuff on the screen. So that will be in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this one, and stay tuned for the next one. <music>